tried so many things to get the birds to stay out of the garden and nothing has worked so far so I ordered some scare tape. Oh. Oh. Oh, I need scissors though. How long does one make this? Maybe like this? Oh, fancy. Okay, let's start setting it up. I'm so excited. First, I'll start with my grapevines. Okay, that should do the trick. You know what it kind of reminds me of? That material that they would sell on those six at the dollar store, I used to wave it around and pretend I was a gymnast at the Olympics. <laughs> Doing my little thing. Doesn't it seem like it could totally do that? Anyways, back to work. Maybe one right here. Ah. The birds had started making a mess of the garden beds. I mean, I would find straw mold everywhere. And by everywhere, I mean all throughout the pathways. When I sowed seeds, those would get dug up. And somehow they also figured out how to flip the cardboard. I think maybe they just sort of hopped underneath and would peck at the seeds and make a mess while they were at it. And that's what really upset me because I thought, okay, if you're gonna eat my fruit, then just eat it, but don't make a mess. I don't blame them though, because I'd wanna come here too. <laughs> just kidding. Am I putting too much of this? I kind of feel like maybe. By the way, did I tell you guys that I saw a rat yesterday in the garden again? And it always happens on days when I'm not gonna film. I came out here to check on the garden and to start cleaning up and it was gray and white and it ran across that portion of the garden. If there's one thing that upsets me more than birds, it's rats in the garden. And I need to show you right now what they did because obviously they've done things like eat a lot of my fruit, a lot of my berries went missing. I actually had two more strawberries that were ripening and they're gone now. There was bite marks on them and then yesterday, the rest of the strawberries disappeared. So I need to figure out how to get rid of them because Can you guys imagine if I'm putting these up to scare the birds away and they see them and they're like, A fiesta? Don't mind if I do. With my luck, that might just happen. I'm gonna be real candid with you. I'm almost done with the roll. I mean, I still have quite a bit left, but I went throughout the entire garden, setting it up all over the trellises, down the sides. I wanted to make sure I left no inch uncovered that I normally see the birds on just to make sure that they don't mess with the garden. And literally as I finished setting some up, they started coming and just perching on the trellises, staring at me. Meanwhile, I'm up there like, ah, my eyes because the tape is reflecting, especially now that the sun is out. And, and the birds don't seem to care at all. Also, let's get back to my rat dilemma. <laughs> so first I'm gonna show you what they do to the garden. Exhibit A, that eggplant is missing because the rats got to it. And before I started coming outside early in the morning, I wasn't aware of what happened whenever the irrigation went off. Everything's set up on drip, it's on a schedule. And after setting it up, none of my plants have died so far. But a few days ago, I was out here, the drip was on and normally it's really quiet. You hear a little bit of sputtering when it first turns on and the water starts flowing. But aside from that, it's silent the rest of the time until it turns off. As I was building the structure, I started hearing water gushing out. And at first I didn't pay a lot of attention to it because I thought, okay, it's no big deal. Things are getting watered. And then I stopped and I thought, well, wait, there shouldn't be any noise right now because the water should be just quietly trickling out. And then I started seeing water running out from underneath some of my planters. And I checked behind them and the rats had done this. So at first I couldn't see how big the holes were, so I tried taking some tape and wrapping it around. But as you can see right there, they were pretty large holes, which is why water was just gushing out. And by the time I usually came out here, it was so hot the water had dried up, so I had no idea. Once I realized what the rats had done, I plugged them up with some goof plugs, and there have been no leaks since, but I think I know where the rats are hiding. In the bananas. 
So as you guys can see, I have quite a bit of mulch right there. It's, did you hear that? Nope, just me, okay. That is a perfect breeding ground for rats to be able to build their nests and they can hide out until the sun goes down and then go and wreak havoc on the garden. So what I'm gonna have to do is get rid of all this mulch. Oh my gosh, okay. Woo. I'm starting to sweat a little bit more. It's not getting that much hotter right now, but just the thought of rodents, um, Honestly, though, I feel like I'm kind of living my disco dreams right now. So I have this leftover one by two that I'm going to use to trellis up this tomato. I had made a TV trellis, which worked fine at first, but every time I buy them, they've been coming out thinner and thinner, and I don't think it's strong enough to support the weight of the tomato, which has started sort of flopping over. So I'm gonna use this stake, drive it into the ground, and to support my tomatoes this way. So let's do it. And then I'm going to push it into the ground. So I actually cut the bottom of it into a V to make it easier to insert into the soil. And I'm gonna use my hammer to try and drive it in as much as possible. Oh, this is gonna take me forever. <sighs> Snack break, we must persevere. So next what I'm gonna do is take some jute twine. I'm gonna start tying this tomato up. Oh, I need scissors. Now in this case, this one has gone a little bit wild. So I'm also gonna have to prune it. Maybe I should do that first actually. I've got my handy dandy pruner. So I'm gonna take off all the suckers. Usually I like to leave them on cherry tomato varieties because then I get way more production. But in this case, because this plant is just going crazy, I really need to get it under control. So you know what? I take that back. I don't think I'm gonna take off all of the suckers. I'm gonna take off whatever doesn't really have fruit on it. Can you imagine if I saw a hornworm right now? All right, I think that is looking a lot better already. It'll grow wild again in about one to two weeks. I'm gonna start going in with my jute twine. And tying it in a couple of different spots. Oh, there we go. Let's remove this trellis. Here's what I'm talking about. Look at the width of these bamboo stakes. The width of this is probably less than that of a pencil. And they didn't used to make them like this, which is why I feel like they're just not as sturdy as they used to be. But let's keep on going. The good thing about these cherry varieties is that they keep producing throughout the entire summer as long as they're watered and fed. And this one does get a little bit more sun than the other ones just because of the location it's in and because this portion of the shade cloth is a little more open so it lets more light through. But it also helps shield it enough to allow it to continue flourishing and you can start to see some more blooms happening right here. There's a big sucker on here but it also has fruit. So I'm just gonna leave it on. Okay. Ah, that looks so much better already. Oh, and there's one tomato on. Oh, nope. Never mind. There was one good tomato on there at some point. Now that this is done, I have to head back inside. But before I do, I'm going to sweep up the pathways. Oh, there's a lot of bird poop on the pavers. Do you guys know of any good way of cleaning that? I probably could just come in with some soap and water and try scrubbing it. One of the main reasons I like sweeping the pathways is not only because it makes the garden look nicer, but also because if there's ever any hornworms, I can spot the poop right away.
I wish I didn't have to say this, but I think it's time I go inside.